Let's take a look at another example of finding centroids of a region. In this example, we're going to look for the centroid of the region bounded by the curves y equals cosine of x, y equals 0, x equals 0, and x equals pi halves. Now, admittedly, y equals 0 is really just the x-axis, and x equals 0 is just the y-axis. And since x equals pi halves is an x-intercept of cosine, we didn't need the last one, so it's somewhat implied, but that's okay. Um, to find this centroid here, we first want to look for x-bar. And so remember the formula we have. x-bar is equal to 1 over a times the integral from a to b of the function x times f of x dx. So let's first figure out the area. The area under the curve we've done many times. We want to find the integral from a to b. In this case, we're going to go from 0 to pi halves of our function f of x, which in this case is cosine of x dx. So antiderivative of cosine would be sine of x. We get that. We have to evaluate from 0 to pi halves. Now, sine of pi halves is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So we subtract that 1 minus 0, and we get 1. So the area under the curve is just going to be 1. So as we kind of we kind of can ignore the 1 over a part there, uh, because dividing by 1 doesn't do much, which kind of simplifies our calculation here. So to do x bar, we're now going to integrate from 0 to pi halves uh, the function x times cosine of x dx. Now, this calculation right here, in order to do this, we're going to have to use integration by parts. We're going to set u equal to x. We're going to set du equal to dx. Uh, dv then becomes uh, cosine x dx. And then we get that v would then be sine of x. Great. So when we apply the integration by parts formula, we're going to get u times v, which is x times sine of x. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi halves. And then we subtract from that the integral of v du. That'll still go from 0 to pi halves. And we're going to get sine of x dx. Great. Plugging in, uh, like we saw before, plugging in pi halves into sine gives us a 1. So you plug into the x, you're going to get pi halves. So we're going to start off with uh, pi halves. Then you're going to subtract from that, plug it in 0. Well, 0 for x or 0 in for sine. You're going to get 0 in both cases. So it's just going to disappear. Moving on to the next part, the antiderivative of negative sine is cosine. So we get a positive cosine right there. Uh, we evaluate that from 0 to pi halves. Uh, let's copy down the pi halves one more time. When you plug in cos or when you plug in pi halves into cosine, you're going to get 0. And then when you, subtract, when you plug in 0 into cosine, you're going to get a 1. So we see that the x coordinate for the x coordinate for the, sorry the x bar for the for the for the centroid is going to be this value right here pi halves minus one. Great. How about y bar? What is that thing going to look like? Let's put a let's put a box around the answer there. So for y bar, we have the formula one over the area times the integral from a to b one half f of x squared dx. Now, like we saw before, the area in this case is 1, so we can ignore it. Uh, and then proceeding forward, our integral would look like the integral from 0 to pi halves, 1 half cosine uh, squared of x dx. Now, in this situation, because we have the integral cosine squared, we're going to use the half angle identity here. So we're going to get 1 fourth the integral from 0 to pi halves of 1 plus cosine of 2x dx. Now you'll notice that we got a we got a one fourth in front of this thing. This is a consequence of having a one half already there, and then there's a one half that pops out from the half angle identity. So taking the antiderivative of these things, we got a one fourth in front. One is going to raise to become an x, and then cosine will raise to become a one half sine of 2x as we go from zero to pi halves, like so. So when we plug in pi halves into x, you'll just get a pi halves. When you plug it into sine, well, you're going to get 2 pi over 2, which is actually sine of pi. Sine of pi is 0, so it's just going to vanish. So we're going to get 1 fourth times pi halves. And then last, when you plug in the 0, it'll disappear there. And then sine of 0 is again 0, so it's goner. And so you're just going to subtract 0 from that. And we see that the y-coordinate of the centroid is going to be pi eighths. 
which if we come back up to our picture, which this, this diagram here is drawn to scale, we see that does look like the center of gravity there.